R. Kelly found guilty, he's out of here. Finally. They say when people were recanting their statements. What really got him, I think, convicted was the um, Surviving R. Kelly um, film. He's not getting out. Joining us now is R. Kelly's ex-wife, Andrea Kelly. We told this show back in 2019, you were emotionally, physically, sexually abused by R. Kelly. Um, it, uh, thank you so much for coming. Finally, I can experience a humiliating loss to a 13-year-old without lagging out. Finally, we can policy live stream our... Coming back on the program this morning. I think what might seem remarkable to people, Dre, is that it has taken this long. Yeah, I, I think that it's really, really sad. And I think that as a human race, we really need to look at women in general. I have often said that if any of his victims were blonde hair and blue eyes, it would have taken this long. Women of color tend to be lowest on the totem pole when it comes to subjects of domestic violence, sexual abuse. So it's really sad, but it's See, they said that it, it took him so long to be convicted because the visit, the, the women didn't have blonde hair. It was women of color. 13 years to 1996, 2009. And I think one of the hardest things for you is that you share three children with him. I mean, this is a man who's been accused um, of multiple abuses, including against you know, minors, um, and now faces life in prison. What are your thoughts as his ex-wife and the mother of his children? Well, I sit in a very difficult place because unlike the rest of his victims, I also share children with him. I was married to him, so I wear two hats. I wear the hat of a survivor and an advocate, but I also wear the hat of a mother and an ex-wife. So it's very difficult for me. I feel that my heart is in two places. Uh, my heart definitely goes out to the survivors and the courage that it takes to even come forward and tell the story. But my heart breaks as a mother because this is now the legacy that my children will have to deal with and their children's children at the end of the day. You cannot walk away from your bloodline. I have the ability to separate and kind of distance myself from it, but his blood runs through my children's veins. And it's a part of their DNA. They can't escape it even if they wanted to. So it's very difficult for me to sit in that position. But she was with him for all these years, man. It ain't no way she couldn't have got away or told somebody something or made some type of police reports. Now, I'm not victim shaming. If she literally was hurt by him in these ways that she's saying and portraying to the media, then my condolences to her. But I honestly feel like that she played a part in this, too. You feel me? And I feel like this Rico charge is out here right now, and a lot of people going to be jumping ship. You know what I'm saying? Rico was a whole nother demon by itself. You don't want that. You feel me? Y'all remember how 6 9 started snitching that time? Before he went to jail, he started telling everything. Like, he don't mess with this person. He was, dis he was uh, disassociating himself with the trade 9 and all that different type of stuff, right? She doing the same shit right here, bro. And I honestly feel like that she did play a part in this. There ain't no way all these years she could have got away with these kids and that first before. Did all this other type of stuff. But like I said, my victim shame, it might sound like I'm contradicting myself to some people. But some people know I'm just giving an unbiased statement on both ends, you know? But uh, I just feel like that, uh, that, uh, yeah, she had plenty of chance to get away. I feel like she did play a part, but I can't understand people that be in a relationship like this, they can't get away in their mind mentally. They be mentally enslaved to the relationship and they don't want to leave, so it go both ways. But I honestly feel more of her playing a part than her trying to get away. Because if, if everything was going good for R. Kelly right now, bro, with no problems, she still be willing to deal with him. Even when this shit first started, she was riding around listening to his music, playing his music and stuff like that. So how you this is I mean just, how you gonna just throw to the wayside right now when you're going through this situation when all the other shit was happening you was playing the music riding around jamming and stuff like that most of the time people be so sick and tired of their victimizer and everything like that the person who actually hurt them 
they be so sick when they don't even want to hear nothing or see nothing or nothing. So, you know, you got to pay attention to shit like that. But I'm not victim shaming. If, she, if, if it did happen all the way and she was 100% innocent, I'm sorry. But other than that, she out there. She tripped. I watched last night, Dre. I watched the interview that you did the last time you came on the program. And your daughter, Joanne, said she still loved her father. But she felt she had to love him from a distance. And how does that relationship survive something like this? Well, I can't answer for my daughter because, again, I can only speak to my journey as his ex-wife and a survivor and an advocate. But I think that that goes to say with any child, it doesn't matter if your parents um, have a problem with drug addiction, you are still going to love them because they are part of your DNA. You share blood with them. Um, I also support my children in whatever they feel because at the end of the day, whether he ever sold another song, found guilty or not guilty, what is true and will always be true is that it's their father. So they have the right to feel whatever they feel, but I think what is healthy, no matter, like I said, if your parent is addicted to drugs or if they're an alcoholic, you have to know how to protect your mental state and love them from a distance, and they're not allowed to be toxic in your life just because they are your parents. Just to remind viewers of um, the court case, he's been found guilty of being the ringing of a racketeering and sex trafficking scheme that preyed on women and children. He had rules and would punish those women and children for breaking them. And the rules included times uh, when they could use the bathroom, when they could eat, when they could make phone calls. There would be punishments for looking at other men. You said anything could set him off, from the milk being cold, wearing something too revealing, or too much tone in your voice, even if someone came to the house and you spoke. You, what, what was that like to live with? I'll kill you wrong for what he did to her, if, she, if he did something to her. But some of the stuff that she just said is man stuff. And I'm not taking up for kill, I'm being unbiased. That's man stuff. I'm going to tell my woman, I don't want to worry about a lot of revealing stuff. You know what I'm saying? A lot of men don't want their women yelling at them. You know, it's little stuff like that that she's saying that I feel like it's pity. She just using it against him to get away because they just said it's a RICO charge. He was the ring leader. So that means it's a ring of people, you know what I'm saying, that's going to be going to jail too. So she, yeah, she's trying to disassociate herself, man. Real talk. Pay attention, man. Real talk. But, like I just said, that's man stuff, bro. That's man stuff. So I feel like she should have kept that. She should have said if he was black, she would be You know, going up her head and everything like that, bro. But a lot of men going to be stern on their woman when it comes to certain things, and that's just how it is. And if you're watching this, you know your man like that, too, in a certain way. He don't want you out here showing this and showing that. There's some men that don't care this, you know, whatever, whatever. But the majority of men ain't going for that at all. They ain't going to hear no woman yelling and shit like that. But yeah, you already know a lot of men ain't going for that at all. So it is what it is. Let's get back to it, though. It's a lack of constant fear. And if anyone has done their research, and I hope that more journalists will, if you decide to interview more victims and survivors, knowing the cycles of abuse, it's called walking on eggshells. That's what it means. That is the term that is used when you never know what you're going to get. Like I did say in an uh, interview before, yes, having the milk too cold, and then one time it's not cold enough if you spoke and you weren't supposed to. I can only say that my journey and what I went through, what I have heard, speaks very true to my life. It is parallel to my life, and there's no way for anybody else to know it because I haven't shared it with anyone. I, it's, 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 I, I, I'm going to miss that. I, mean, I, I haven't. I, I don't listen to her, Kelly. I try not to. I really try to follow because it was really a shame of what he did to women. Um, he, he was a genius. He was a great artist. But like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification, and let me know in the comments if you guys agree with him being found guilty. Thanks for watching, Chili's.